So today I wanted to do a review on the Nero monitor controller by Audient. And um, I've been using this for about a couple of weeks and I think it's fantastic. So I just wanted to go and do an overview of the different features that it has and my overall experience with this unit. So to begin with, I'll start by just discussing the different features. So basically, I guess starting from left to right. So this thing has several different inputs. It has actually a total of four inputs. And you have source one, source two, alt, and then Q. And it defaults to source one, and that's generally like you're getting a line level input here, another line level input here. Q is also another line level input uh, that's generally routed to one of the different headphone outputs, and there's four of them, and each one can be routed pretty much a custom different input. So, but by default, they get the Q mix. The Alt has three, basically two different types of inputs. You have an auxiliary input, which can be type of input that you usually use to plug in something like a phone to your car or something like that for to listen to music. It also has a built-in DAC or a digital to audio converter and it has two different inputs which I'll show in the back in a little bit. It has a coaxial SPDIF input and it also has an SPDIF optical input. So this thing can actually be used as a converter even if you don't have a, an interface basically. I actually haven't really been able to properly test this out but I did go out of my Mac computer just out of the optical into this and it didn't quite sound right because I feel like the clocking or something on the Mac isn't really that great so but basically it it gives you a lot of features there and this knob right here is the trim for the alt input so and right here you can select which one you're using and I mean this is kind of the default zero or unity gain and then you can actually trim it down or trim it up uh, going down from there you can choose your um, alternate input right here we have talk back and this is really cool this is the gain so it has a built-in microphone uh, it sounds fine to me it doesn't do any like clicks or pops when you turn it on when you engage the talkback. I've used other talkbacks that kind of pop when you turn on, so it's pretty annoying. But uh, it sounds really clean. It also has an XLR input, so you can use an external mic, and Audient actually recommends that you do. I guess this microphone isn't really that great. But um, this talkback is normally routed to one of these inputs, so for example, if I go to like headphone number two, it's showing me that I'm getting the Q input and I'm also getting talk back. Headphone number one, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but is pretty much a standard headphone for the control room. So everything else is kind of like if, if you have somebody else listening in or you're recording somebody. Um, let's talk about the different input sources here. Like I said, source one, source two, alt. You can't have multiple inputs engaged at the same time, so you just have to kind of choose which one you're going to monitor to, through, through the control room. And that's going to feed this output knob right here. And also, of course, it's going to feed one of these different outputs as well. Let's actually talk about these outputs. So it defaults to the main output, and that's generally going to go to your main set of speakers. You can also have another two sets of stereo speakers and you have a mono sub output and this sub can, you can kind of independently engage it depending on which set of speakers you're using. You can also program it to automatically turn on when you switch to one of these three sets of speakers. What you can't do with these outputs, and I've heard some people kind of complain about that, is that you can't engage any of these sets of speakers simultaneously. So I can't have the main speakers and the alt speakers engaged at the same time. Um, and that's generally not a problem um, because I don't know why you would want to have, you know, let's say four sets of speakers playing at the same time. However, 
I have used stereo subwoofers before, and since this is only a mono sub, it would have been cool to say have like a stereo set of subwoofers on Alt 2, and that can be engaged with my main set of speakers. So I have, you know, my mains and stereo subs, but because I can only do a mono sub, that's kind of the only situation here. But otherwise, generally, this is totally great. On top of that, I mentioned we have this volume knob. It's It feels great. It's really smooth. The, the tracking and everything is like really smooth, really clean volume adjustments. I can't say anything negative about it. Um, we also have a dim and cut switch. So the cut switch is basically a mute. And the dim switch, as you can imagine, actually dims the volume down. And it's cool because you can actually program how low it dims down to. So that's a really handy feature. Um, speaking of which, you can also program the volume output for each one of these, except for the subwoofer. It seems like the subwoofer output, you can't actually adjust. So if you have an, an adjustment volume on your actual sub itself, then that's where you would have to kind of adjust it to kind of match it to your speakers. Uh, but yeah, you can, if you have three different sets of speakers, I have two sets I have, and they're generally kind of mismatched. So um, it's been great to actually be able to level them out. So when I switch back and forth, you don't get like a jump or dip in volume. On top of that, we have these switches here for the main outputs or the control room outputs. We have a mono switch and a polarity switch. And I'm sure a lot of people are very familiar with mono switches because they're available on a lot of monitor controllers. Uh, one thing that was very attractive to me about this unit was that it has this polarity switch, which not a lot of units have. And what this allows you to do is basically, while mono allows you to listen to what what's in the middle or center of the mono information, the polarity switch, if I'm not mistaken, it reverses the polarity of one of the channels, either the left or the right. And now they're out of phase with each other. And the way I use it is I engage that and I put it in mono. And now I can actually listen to what's going on on basically the sides. So it's kind of like a mid side thing. It's, um, it's kind of like you might use this for mastering. Um, it's really helpful for me. I mean, listening to mono is fantastic and very important. But listening to the sides allows me to actually kind of hear if there's like too much low end in the side information and sometimes it's hard to tell if you're just listening in stereo and you can't really tell if, if you're listening in mono so that's a fantastic feature that Audient has on most of their units so I have the ID14 as well so I really like that they had that built into the software we do have the four headphone outputs Headphone one is supposed to be a little bit higher quality. Apparently, this is like the control room headphone. I've tested all of them and they all sound equally good. And um, yeah, they, it, they really sound great. I can't really say anything about bad about it. The volume control is great. It has plenty of output to feed pretty much most headphones that you would use. So I have no problems with it. It sounds really clear. And it sounds better than the headphone output on my audio interface. So really happy about that. I think that covers all of the different features built in. One more thing to mention, you can't actually adjust, unless I'm mistaken, but you can't actually adjust the input volume that's coming into here. It's, it's pretty much, it has to be set on whatever's coming in. Uh, you can just adjust the output volumes. And it does have a headphone output in the front and it has the other headphones in the back, which I'll show in a moment. All right, so here we're looking at the back of the unit. And starting from left to right, we have a power button switch, actually, right here. We have the power adapter input right here. We have the SPDIF in with the coaxial over here and the optical over here. And we have the three other headphone outputs. There's one in the front, the main one. There's a sub output. You have uh, alternate output 
two, alternate output one, the main output, so stereo pairs. The Q input, we have for the aux input, you have an RCA left and right, or the eighth inch uh, jack input. And you have two different source inputs right there. You have the external mic input, and you have it actually has built-in phantom power in case you need to add phantom power to your condenser and that's pretty much the back of the unit so now to just give an overall review I mean this unit has been fantastic it's really really clean really really transparent I personally think it's up there with some of the very highly priced units that are in the multi thousand dollar range um, it's I've seen other reviews I've seen other tests that people have done some null tests to really show that there is absolutely no coloration that this unit's doing so a lot of people think that passive units are the way to go because they're not going to color the sound and apparently active units might but the circuitry in this is fantastic it's interesting that It might be kind of hard to hear that, but there's some kind of clicking or relay, some sort of mechanical switching going on in there, which is very interesting. I think there's some sort of sophisticated circuitry in here. I don't really know what's going on, but uh, I'd like to think that that has something to do with like a lot of really clean pathways inside of this thing that just really create a very transparent sound. Stereo image is fantastic. Nothing really changes. Very smooth volume adjustments, very comfortable to use. The buttons feel great. Everything just feels very well built, very high quality. And it's a for the price, it's great. I mean, this unit goes for about $500 US. And it's not the most affordable unit, but I think you really get what you paid for for this. I think in this price range, it's really hard to beat this unit with all the different features it has. It has a lot more features than I really need. But um, it, it's fantastic, and I'm I'm very very pleased with this unit. So um, I I can't really recommend it enough. So that's my review for the Audient Nero monitor controller. I highly recommend it for individuals that are looking to get a monitor controller. If maybe you're upgrading from a lower priced unit, uh, and now you're looking at something better, but are not ready or willing to commit to something far more expensive in the you know the thousand dollars and up range i think this is a fantastic unit and i'm sure that you will be very happy with it so thanks a lot for watching you guys uh, i plan to do more videos very soon and i'd appreciate it if you guys enjoyed this video if you found value in it to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys next time